In today's video we're going to show you how easily you can create dynamic forms in Storyblock with custom styling and input validation. Let's say I would like to create a simple form with first name, last name, email and phone. We created a dynamic form component in Storyblock which we will insert to the page. We've already styled it, but as we're going to show you, the styling can be edited easily through Tailwind. The field form endpoint is the URL where the form will send the data. On our local computer, we have a simple JSON server running, which we're going to target. For this demo, we have created a simple input component. It is possible to make presets from the components you have. We're going to use one of the presets we've prepared. Let's set up the first name input field. As we open the instance, we see the data fields that we are using. The name is the unique identificator that HTML uses for mapping the form data for the server handler. Below that, we can choose what kind of input type we want. We're going to leave it at the text for the first name field. The label field will set the label of our input field. Set it to first name. The placeholder is what is shown to the user when the field is empty. We're going to put some text there. And now to the exciting part, form validation. Our code base uses the package called Validate for providing validators. We are using its built-in validators which we map on Storyblock. In the Validate documentation you can find the whole list of validators. You can find the link in the description. There is a way to build entirely custom validators as well. For this demo, we decided to use these five validators. All of them with editable error messages and optional parameters according to their usage. And we can put more of them on the same field. We want this first name field to be required and we're gonna set a custom error message as well. Also, we want to show you the minimum length validator. Let's say the name must be at least two characters long. We can customize the error message here as well. Now we can try out submitting and see if it lets us submit. As the field is required, it cannot be empty. Also, if I try to put only one character, it works as intended. We will put an asterisk to the field label as a sign of a required field. Now we will progress to the last name field. It will have a similar setting, just with change name. When we have that, let's create the email field. This will have the email type, so mobile device keyboards can be more user friendly and treat this field as an email. We will set up the label and the placeholder. This field will be required and we're gonna use the email validator. Let's also set a custom warning message. The last field is gonna be the phone number. This won't be required, but when filled in, it will need to have a length of 9 characters and all of them numbers. So we will set up the min and max length with their custom messages. Now we select the numeric validator which accepts only numbers. Regarding the look of the form, I would like to have the first and last name fields in the same row on higher resolutions. How can I achieve that? As we mentioned at the start of the video, we are using Tailwind to have fully customizable styling. I can click in the styling tab here and fill in the class names. 
So up from medium breakpoint the field will take up only half of the width. We will set the same thing for the other field as well. And now we solve the space between them using paddings. When we move between the mobile and desktop views, we see the difference. Let's say that we want to change the color of the submit button as well. It's doable the same way. We just find the field for the button class and let's switch the default and hover background colors to green. Now, as we finish, let's try out our form validation and submission. We're gonna fill in our first and last names. We need to input a valid email. And let's say we want to put in our mobile number as well. We just need to make sure it's 9 characters long. That's it. Now, as we click on the submit button, we are redirected to our backend, which received the correct form data. As you saw, it's that easy to create modular forms in Storyblock. If you are interested in the front-end code, we've written a blog about it under the Storyblock articles. We've put a link into the description. Hopefully you've learned something new today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, we're gonna upload more front-end videos. See you next time.